raven's flock, the flock rundown is the place to be. My man Ryan has been a lifelong Ravens fan since he was born. So I'm telling you now, it's about to go down. The podcast, the flock rundown. Ravens, baby. Nothing gets better than waking up and wondering how high we can fly. Tune in. Motionless brainwaves attempt to swim there where the sense can't tame the untamed. What's up, guys? I'm Ryan. Welcome to another episode of the Flock Rundown. Today we're going over Adrian Amos and Ravens mutual interest. Some rumors swirling around, so I'm going to touch on that, see if he's a good fit, see if we should get him over Marcus Peters, and then also an ex-Raven, now the op, Zadarius Smith, has been traded to the Cleveland Browns. So we'll get into that as well. So there's been some rumors for a few months now swirling that Adrian Amos, he had a visit to Baltimore, that he was interested in Baltimore, and then it just kind of picked back up a few days ago. I've seen a lot on Twitter, seen a lot of people talking about it, a lot of articles saying that Adrian Amos and the Baltimore Ravens have mutual interest. Now, I don't know how true all this is. This could be an absolute smoke screen, so I'm not saying this is going to happen. So Adrian Amos has been on the Packers. He plays safety. He used to be on the Bears. Really good safety. He's 30 years old. He's from Baltimore, Maryland, which I think could be a big attraction point for him. But it also could be a big reason why these rumors are swirling. So I don't really know. I would love to have Adrian Amos. I mean, it's a Baltimore native. He's a veteran in the NFL. He knows the game. He's put in a lot of good years. But I do think it would be more of a luxury signing over a necessity. Um, I'd like to add one more veteran cornerback, preferably Marcus Peters. I think that we need another outside corner. If one of if Humphrey or Rocky Asin go down, you know, Brandon Stevens getting thrown back out there, Pepe Williams, Jalen Armour Davis, you know, Caillou Blue Kelly. I think that that's so young that I'd rather not have that happen. Obviously, if Rocky Asin and Marlon Humphrey stay completely healthy, we're good, but that is rare that they don't miss any games. And I'm not trying to get exposed like we did in some games last year. So I would love another veteran corner, especially Marcus Peters, just because he knows this defense. He's got that dog in him. He's a Baltimore Raven. We all love Marcus Peters. So I think that he is more of a necessity and feels more of a need on our team because Kyle Hamilton is kind of going to step into more of a safety role. But If we do sign Amos, I don't mind what that does for our defense because it kind of unlocks that Kyle Hamilton role again that he played last year. Even if they do make more Kyle Hamilton a more traditional safety and let him play deeper a little more, Amos has had plenty of experience in the box as well. He's a very versatile player. He can play in the box. He can play nickel. He can blitz. He can play deep. He's had a ton of experience at free safety. He's had a ton of experience in the box. So I think Amos would be an incredible piece to just move all around our secondary and kind of create a positionless secondary. Um, So I'd be super excited about it. I'm definitely not anti-Amos signing. Um, And if we could get Amos and Peters, then our offseason is the greatest offseason I've ever seen. But... um, I just don't know if we'd financially be able to make that work. I think the reason that Peters isn't back so far is due to money reasons. So I'm not sure we can make that work. So I'm guessing it's going to be Peters or Amos. Um, In that case, I think I'd rather go with Peters, but I'm not mad either way. I think Amos would provide a ton of versatility and security for our secondary. Drop your thoughts below. Do you want to see Adrian Amos in a Raven uniform? If it comes down to Amos or Peters, who are you choosing? The other thing I wanted to get into today is Zardarius Smith, an ex-Raven, who left us in free agency after he played out his deal, went to the Packers, got a bag, respect it. He balled for the Packers. We weren't going to pay him that much, so I totally respect that move for him. He had an incredible run at the Packers. Then he goes and agrees to come back to Baltimore last year and then backs out of the deal. And goes and signs with the Vikings. So at that point, the fan base turned on him for sure. We were welcoming Zardarius Smith back with open arms until last year. But when you back out of a deal, you had a verbal agreement. He backed out of that because another pass rusher made more money. And he realized that his market value 
is higher than he thought it was. Whatever. Business move. He heads back to Minnesota. And then this offseason, he's demanding a trade. And guess where he ends up? The Cleveland Browns. The opposition. So now we got another ex-Raven in the division. Orlando Brown Jr. already went to the Bengals. I cannot wait for that matchup with Ojabo and Owe versus slow Orlando Brown. I love you, Orlando Brown, when you were in the black and purple, but he ain't the most agile guy. Now we got Zardarius Smith in Cleveland opposite of Miles Garrett. It's going to be a pretty good pass rush. I think they're going to be real competition in the division. The division's going to be super tough. It always is pretty tough, but I don't expect anything less from these teams. Every time we have a division game, it's going to be a close game, probably low scoring, and just an absolute dogfight. That's how the AFC North is. It's how it's always been. So Zadarius Smith, can't wait to go against you. Let me get the trade details on that too. So the Vikings get a 2024 fifth round pick and a 2025 fifth round pick from the Browns, and then the Browns get Zardarius Smith a 2025 sixth round pick and a 2025 seventh round pick. So not much. They didn't give up much at all. Um, they gave up two fifths in back-to-back -back years, but they get a sixth and a seventh back in 2025. They're not giving up a whole lot. I'm guessing they've consumed the majority of his cap, if not all of his cap hit. The Vikings didn't have much leverage. Zadarius made it public that he wanted out. And I'm not sure what you guys think, but I'm just kind of glad that he did back out and we've kind of dodged this mess because he seems like he's like, all about business, which I respect, you know what I mean? Like, be about your business. But as a fan of the game, I just want to watch people love football and ball in the field. And he always has. But the way he's just hopping around to different teams and backing out of deals and demanding trades, it just seems like a headache that I'm glad we avoided. We went younger. We drafted Owe. We drafted Ojabo. I'm sure we're going to sign another vet or two. Hopefully, Justin Houston comes back. He put in some great, great games last year. And we're good, you know. We, we don't need Zardarius, and I can't wait to go against him. Those Cleveland games just going to get a little bit more juicy because he's over there. It'd be funny if we signed Clowney and we just flip-flopped, you know. I'd be down for Clowney to, to hop in the D-line rotation if the price is right. So tell me what you think about Zardarius playing for the opposition now, the Cleveland Browns. Um I'm not thrilled about it, but like I said, I don't really want him back in Baltimore at this point. So he put in some great years. We drafted him. Um, he balled out. I mean, he was a late-round pick, and he really balled out, and he earned the deal that he got in Green Bay. So got to give him credit there. So that's pretty much it for today. Thank you for tuning in to another episode of The Flock Rundown, and I'll see you guys next time. Motionless brainwaves attempt to swim. They wear the sense, can't tame the untamed.